the presentation by the Minister of Tourism of the Hellenic Republic, Mrs. Olga Kefaloyani, was scheduled originally for uh, tomorrow at the closing of tomorrow's sessions. Uh, instead, uh, this will take place now. Um, please keep in mind that the presentation uh, of the minister was originally scheduled within the context of tomorrow's discussions. So the, the context is cultural tourism as one of the broader concepts and pilot initiatives that the foundation will be exploring as one possible area for interven intervention in maximizing impact for the, the younger generations and, uh, and our country as a whole. So um, without further ado, I would like to, to, to welcome the Minister of Tourism, Mrs. Olga Yifalogiani. It's a great pleasure and honor to have her with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, the truth is, is I'm uh, less of a closing of uh, today's meeting where we uh, followed some uh, very interested, interesting analysis based on data and uh, research on youth unemployment and rather as a prelude for uh, tomorrow's discussion as my intervention was initially uh, scheduled for tomorrow's session on cultural tourism. But in any case, I would uh, please ask you to allow me to congratulate the Stavros Nyarkos Foundation for its significant initiatives, such as today's conference, its effective interventions, and uh, its overall contribution to the Greek society. Congratulations for a truly <laughs> inspirational work. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity to address a very prestigious audience and uh, allowing me to share some of my insight on the socio-economic phenomenon that is spread worldwide, regardless of the financial conditions of each country, or the different strategies governments might pursue. Unemployment is determined by a series of distinguishable social, cultural, and structural variables. This conference has indeed provided some valuable insight the causes of this alarming situation, as well as its repercussions, are becoming clear enough to grasp. It is therefore time to find practical and effective solutions and apply them in a drastic manner. And we have all realized that we need to expedite our efforts. Sustainable development is a foremost priority for governments throughout the world. Core values such as social cohesion, environmental protection, and economic growth must be addressed collectively and put into a global perspective. To that end, the outcomes of crises such as instability, poverty, and extreme unemployment call for intergovernmental and transnational cooperation. Most countries present weaknesses in terms of successfully boosting youth employment on their own. So cooperation must primarily focus on the exchange of best practices. Europe is slowly coming out of a severe economic crisis, but unemployment and especially unemployment among youth is a problem that still persists. It is even more striking that youth unemployment presents the paradox of a highly unemployed generation, yet at the same time of a highly educated generation. And indeed, this is a sign of social non-sustainability. Within the European Union, economic integration has always been of key importance. But when it comes to social cohesion, EU governments are struggling to make up for lost time. There are several different policies towards this direction, as well as transnational programs to alleviate social inequalities among European citizens. But apart from all the effort that is being made on a global and European level to tackle this problem, there is an additional need to address the issue on a national level as well. As far as Greece is concerned, it is now common knowledge that the economic crisis has inevitably led to high unemployment rates that greatly affect unemployment. And we believe that on the course of getting our economy back on track, 
we cannot afford a collapsed society. Tackling youth unemployment is of prime concern and we have to put into use every possible tool that we have in our hands. Tourism development might well be the strongest of these tools. Our strategy and our approach is based on the implementation of a horizontal policy that not only translates into revenues and growth, but also promotes sustainable development for everyone. Tourism creates employment opportunities, supports local and regional communities, and consequently helps boost nationwide social sustainability. Despite the economic hardships it's been facing these past few years, Greece has witnessed a significant growth in tourism figures. These promising results refer not only to greater number of arrivals, but also to the prolongation of the tourist season, as well as to the emergence of new tourism products and destinations. Our government has significant indications to believe that tourism can constitute the solid ground on which to rebuild our social and economic cohesion. From a sector of low politics, tourism is growing to become an engine for recovery. In collaboration with competent bodies, the Greek government has planned and implemented programs for tackling youth unemployment. In May 2013, we launched a program for 10,000 unemployed young people aged 18 to 29 years old using 39 million euro of both government and EU funding. The Association of Greek Tourism Enterprises has been the key body to implement this program. Through this program, interns were given the chance to gradually enter the job market working in the tourism, travel and hospitality industry. The program involves theoretical as well as vocational training, support and guidance of the interns and financial benefits for the participating businesses. We also collaborated with the German government and have already put in place the first vocational training program based on the German dual system of education. The pro pro programs have already started in Crete and in Athens and are meant to complement the Greek state's vocational training in tourism. The significant increase in inbound tourism arrivals and expenditure is expected to be repeated in 2014 and we are all intensifying our efforts for this tendency to continue in the years to come. Greece, apart from its natural assets, is unique as a destination because of its culture that it offers in abundance. Greece's lush cultural heritage, monuments, tradition, customs and the way of life, as well as its contemporary art scene, constitute an absolute attraction to travelers worldwide. It is therefore an obvious choice for us to approach cultural tourism as one of the most prominent special types of tourism in which our country needs to invest. But for cultural heritage to work as a lever towards achieving the goal of economic and social sustainability, it should be carefully managed in order to allow us both to preserve our cultural assets and at the same time provide visitors with memorable experience. Through carefully planned cultural tourism management, through the promotion of tangible and intangible cultural assets, we strongly believe that Greek regions can find their competitive advantages. Local communities could establish and even reinvent their local identities and achieve sustainable economic development. Surely, partnerships of public and private organizations in cultural tourism is the way forward. Local and regional governments must embrace the benefits of cooperating with the private sector in order to ensure success for their cultural tourism projects. These partnerships are welcomed not only on a local or regional level, but on a national level as well. In this context, the Ministry of Tourism is actively supporting initiatives by private and public sector organizations, such as conservation and restoration projects of historical buildings and sites, and design and management of cultural routes. Such projects can help increase tourism income, create more jobs, and stimulate the national economy. To this end, we are more than pleased to hear about the initiative undertaken by the Stavros Nyarchos Foundation 
the Greek Ministry of Culture and Sports, and the Initiative for Heritage Conservation. You will hear about this uh, tomorrow. Uh, we believe that uh, this cooperation can actually pave the way and become the reference point for more initiatives in this field. I'm referring actually to a pilot program for managing and promoting archaeological sites in Greece, which is by all means a quite promising venture. The Ministry of Tourism will actively support such schemes through its marketing toolbox and communication channels. In any case, we cannot afford to oversee the importance of public and private sector partnership in boosting employment in the tourism sector. Meanwhile, as we believe that uh, social integration in addition to promoting creativity are both important, we also look at youth entrepreneurship as a viable alternative. Traditionally, families tend to guide youth towards looking for a job instead of looking for a niche for a breakthrough idea. We strongly believe that the young Greeks have got all the talent and skill needed to stand out in business and enterprise. For the 2014-2020 programming period, the Greek government is allocating funds and placing special emphasis on youth entrepreneurship and especially on tourism-related businesses. Cultural tourism and its supporting businesses is one of the areas that young entrepreneurs should certainly seek to invest in, not only for their own benefit and success, but also for the benefit of local communities and the preservation of their cultural heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, youth unemployment is a real problem that urgently calls for implementation of effective and long-term viable solutions. These solutions are more effective through intra-governmental cooperation. To this end, tourism can and should play a strategic role. In the process of reducing youth unemployment, each country has to deploy its strongest assets in order for tourism pro policies to, provide, to prove successful. As far as Greece is concerned, its greatest asset is its rich cultural heritage. Through governmental initiatives in cultural tourism development and public and private sector partnerships, we are confident that we will not only be making a big step towards nationwide balanced economic growth, but also that we will succeed in achieving social cohesion and sustainability for our communities. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, the minister would uh, like to take a couple of questions now, if there are any. Yes, uh, could you just tell us a little more about the um, dual system initiative uh, and how that is going to be structured and approximately how many people are involved and uh, what occupations and does it, uh, is it a potential pilot for having uh, occupational uh, training that's at least partly in the workplace uh, developed more in other occupations? Thank you. Um, as, you, uh, as you know, this is a um, system that uh, is, a, is very well known in Germany and uh, in, uh, in our collaboration with the German government, uh, it was thought that tourism should be the first sector uh, to introduce this dual system of vocational training uh, in Greece. Uh, this is why we collaborated with the, Greek, with the German government. And the program, uh, as I said before, is now operating as a pilot program in Crete, in the island of Crete, because of course it's a very uh, um, developed tourism region, and also in Athens. Uh, currently there are almost um, 60 students in both uh, schools, and uh, the program is supported by large German companies in the tourism field. 
the, uh, this vocational training of the dual system in tourism will continue, but it is uh, currently acting more as a pilot program for other um, sectors as well. So I, I'm not ready to tell you which the other sectors will be, but what I can say is that uh, we believe that it can definitely complement our own system of vocational training. And uh, the success of this pilot program is definitely a very good um, start and a very good way of, um, of really making some other sectors involved in this, in this kind of uh, program. But definitely tourism and because Greece really uh, has a lot of German tourists and a lot of German enterprises in the tourism industry, um, is the sector that could uh, be the, the starting point for, for this uh, program in Greece. I have to admit that there was a lot of reluctancy in Greece as uh, for this program, but uh, I'm sure that uh, the success and, uh, and the fact that uh, the students will be employed directly after completing um, the curriculum, I think that this is definitely uh, the, the best answer to, to all those who are reluctant about this program. Yes, please. Thank you, Vince Michael, Global Heritage Fund. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for your comments uh, about the importance of uh, sustainable tourism development through archaeology, dealing with both tangible and intangible cultural heritage. Um, in this tourism plan for archaeological sites, we heard earlier that there were some infrastructural issues uh, dealing with increasing tourism, especially if you talk about new tourist sites and new products. Is there also a government plan to deal with some of those infrastructural issues, whether it's capacity of roads, airports, uh, hotel rooms, things like that. So your question is not only about the cultural infrastructure, about the whole, the, 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 the infrastructure, the infrastructure for tourism. Uh, when it comes to airports, uh, the, the, the regional airports in Greece are state owned and they're part of the privatization program of the Greek government. So this is actually uh, already uh, in the way of, uh, let's say, improvement through uh, the privatization, improvement of the infrastructure and uh, services. Uh, when it comes to the accommodation, uh, Greece right now currently has accommodation to meet the demand. Uh, so this is why we are very reluctant when uh, speaking about the growing number of uh, uh, tourism arrivals in Greece, and this is why uh, I allude to seasonality, because what we're trying to do is spread uh, tourism arrivals throughout the year. We don't need more arrivals in the uh, main season. We need uh, to, to be able to attract visitors year-round, and this is why cultural tourism and all the niche areas of tourism are of prime importance. Uh, because it's actually the only answer to how you can extend the season. Uh, so the current infrastructure is enough to meet the current demand, and uh, it is enough also to meet the demand should we be able to extend the season. Uh, but in order for Greece to be able to really grow as a tourism destination, uh, we should attract tourism investment, and this is actually also part of what the Greek Ministry of Tourism is doing right now. And I'm very, very uh, happy to see that there are a lot of new tourism projects in the way. Uh, we have more than 20 uh, such projects in the pipeline, and especially um, tourism infrastructure projects that have to do with the higher end of the market, because of course there's an offering um, across the board, but uh, we are interested in attracting uh, investment in the higher end of uh, the market. I'm not talking only about luxury, but um, for the most sophisticated traveler, and of course with uh, um, taking into consideration all the environmental and other concerns for sustainable development. Uh, so overall, I would say that uh, infrastructure needs to be uh, improved, um, but we also need to have private 
investment in uh, the tourism field. Thank you. Would you like to take another one? Okay. Are there any questions? Yes, please, Mr. Zuras. I've heard that the, all the large-scale uh, uh, touristic enterprises are going well in the in the Greek market. The, the, the SMEs have not so uh, uh, taken this uh, uh, how we say increase in uh, uh, tourism. Uh, what what do you do with this? What is your uh, your uh, plans about the SMEs, not the big uh, touristic uh, enterprises? Well, it's not uh, the data is not exactly uh, as you uh, alluded to because um, something that's very interesting about Greece is that it remains a very attractive destination because of um, the the offering of smaller uh, hotel accommodation or even family and uh, very, very small um, accommodation. And this is something that we actually need to, um, to maintain as an, uh, uh, part of our tourism offering and is something that uh, really uh, distinguishes Greece uh, to other comp competitors in, in the area which offer only the large scale, a little bit homogenous uh, offering. So in this way, we believe that we need to support the uh, SMEs. Uh, we had already in place uh, for the 2007-2013 um, European Structural Funds period, uh, a special program for supporting SMEs. But this is definitely part of um, our um, uh, Mm? of our strategy for the new period, supporting SMEs, especially SMEs that can help us support all the niche markets that we want to develop, such as um, agro-tourism, uh, such as uh, uh, mountain tourism, because we definitely uh, need to diversify the tourism offering. This is uh, already part of our promotional campaign the promotional campaign of Greece right now is Secret Greece. We want to uh, promote the destinations and um, the offering that is less known to the broader public. So not just the sea and the sun and the Greek islands, the well-known Greek islands, but the mainland Greece, the mountainous areas, um, activities in the nature, um, yachting, sailing, um, all spe special uh, types of tourism. And this is why we believe that uh, entrepreneurship in these areas, in these sectors, in the niche markets of uh, tourism, uh, could definitely uh, attract uh, younger uh, people and, uh, and really uh, provide an opportunity for, uh, for employment and entrepreneurship. Minister Kefaloyani, thank, thank you very you. much for being here and for taking the questions. And thank you everyone for your patience and for staying with us until this hour. We've had a slight delay in the program, but considering the very tight schedule, I think we did a great job all together. So we'll see you hopefully for dinner at 8.15 at Molivo's restaurant and we'll resume tomorrow's proceedings at 8 o'clock. The, the registration breakfast start at 8 and proceedings start at 9. Thank you very much.